Hi guys, so I decided to create this short video because, well, there's been quite a controversy regarding the new MacBook Pro, which I just recently received. And I want to compare that during the next few uh, minutes with my previous computer, which is the 2012 non-Retina MacBook Pro, which still got the Super Drive. So first up, a short comparison of the ports that those two devices have. So I've got the MagSafe port here. I've still got the Ethernet port. I've got the FireWire port, which I haven't used at all since I got that machine. I've got a Thunderbolt 1, I think it is. I've got two USB 3 ports, the SD card slot, and a combined headphone mic check which also has an optical output if you want to connect that to your home receiver system on the other side there's the uh, super drive slot uh, cancelling lock as well so on the new macbook pro the 2016 retina version there's two thunderbolt 3 ports um, with usb-c on the left and we've got the same thing on the right as well plus a headphone jack which somehow doesn't feature optical capabilities anymore so so far from the ports perspective um, of course the old macbook pro has a lot more ports but the usb-c uh, thunderbolt ports on the new machine of course a lot more versatile but you will need to use an adapter like this in order to use any current um, features that are on the market and that goes around 9 euros comparing the thickness of the two macbooks um, you definitely notice where all that engineering time during the last um, four years went um, the new macbook Pro is around half the thickness of my previous one and also if you have a look at the top um, the footprint is also a lot smaller so um, that's definitely a, an improvement um, however I'm not the person that is too fond of thickness it always um, gets me into um, thinking it might break at some point although the build quality on this thing is definitely really really solid so I'm sure there's no issue in case you drop it um, it should definitely survive opening the two uh, MacBooks up um, what you directly notice is the uh, difference in the screen area so the um, 2012 MacBook Pro um, has a lot more black bezels around the screen whereas the 2016 one uh, has a lot smaller ones and you already also notice that in the amount of space between the uh, corners of the device and the keyboard now what you also notice is if you have them on the same um, angle that the screen of the older one is a lot more reflective than the new one so you can easily make out the screen contents on the 2016 MacBook Pro compared to the 2012 MacBook Pro and you will also notice that the screen is a lot brighter um, the screen quality is a lot better, so if you zoom in, and I hope that works, um, you're not really able to see any of the pixels, whereas you can do easily do that on the old machine. And the resolution on the old one is far worse, so I'm actually quite stunned by the display on the 2016 uh, MacBook Pro. And also a comparison of the trackpad, um, it's easily noticeable that the size of the new one, um, if I could do that by my hand with my hand, is a lot larger 
than the one on the old machine. So in regard to the keyboard, um, the new MacBook Pro has the second generation butterfly switches um, from the MacBook, Retina MacBook. Um, well, it's still nearly no key travel at all, um, but it's a lot more stable, so each key is a lot more stable and while well, the backlighting is quite nice, um, it doesn't really illuminate, um, you won't see it really good on the video, but it doesn't illuminate the whole keyboard, which is really just the key. What I really like about the keyboard on the old one is the key travel. It's um, around 2 point something millimeters, um, really solid. Um, the keys are not that stable compared to the new one, um, but and they're a bit smaller. But the key travel makes it a lot better to type on, in my experience, after around a week with the device. And also, as a student who's working um, often in libraries, typing on that one so I'm just going to hack on that and then we've got that um, that's a huge difference so I really don't like the noise that um, new keyboard makes when typing on it quickly I get around the same amount of words per minute from both keyboards so that's not a difference but the noise is really, really horrible loud and I'm not sure whether I will be able to use that in a library often because, well, you'll get to um, remember other people and you don't want to do that normally. On the other hand, well, you can show off that you have the new MacBook Pro. In terms of keyboard, the new MacBook Pro also has the touch bar, which is um, quite nice. If you're not that much of a pro user and don't remember your um, keyboard shortcuts, I've been using that since I've got the MacBook Pro and I've configured a better touch tool to also display um, some buttons here. You can either have it display a button for better touch tool here, but that overrides the um, the one for from all the applications that are running, so you can't control Spotify while Spotify is down in the dock. And, but you can do put buttons on that, like a screenshot, and then you also have a nice option list here. So if you want to just do the whole window, there's a button for that on that. So it's quite nice. Um, you can start music on that as well. But in my opinion, it's more than just a, it's just a gimmick right now um, because well. It doesn't really work in iMovie, unfortunately, so if I start up iMovie here and uh, let that load for a moment. So in iMovie, you somehow don't get all those nice features that you have in um, Final Cut Pro. So if you're an iMovie user, I don't think that touch bar is for you. Uh, if you just click on one, you only have the option to um, cut it in half. You can, of course, play the whole thing and you have access to your Spotify uh, playback and you can move that but all in all in my opinion for basic applications it's not that well implemented right now. Another nice thing on the new one which I can't compare to the 2012 uh, MacBook Pro is the Touch ID so you just uh, move your finger over there and you're locked in. So what I have here is the base model. Um, I've got a 2.9 gigahertz Intel Core i5. I've got eight, eight gigs of low power DDR3 RAM. I've got an Intel Iris 550 with 1.5 gigs of VRAM. Moving over to the 2012 MacBook Pro, I've got the 2.5 gigahertz Intel Core i5. It's also the base model here. I've got 8 gigs of 1600 MHz DDR3 RAM and I've got the Intel HD Graphics 4000 with 1.5 GB of um, VRAM as well on this machine. And for the hard drive I've got a 250 GB Corsair MX100 installed um, and also the SuperDrive 
Um, just a quick note, of course the RAM has been upgraded, so I've used 8 gigs of iMac RAM um, in order to um, speed the machine up and also the hard drive, the SSD was installed by myself. It increases the speed of the whole device greatly, as you shall now see when running a Blackmagic um, test. So just giving that a go here. I've run that before, so I'll show you uh, the results on screen now. I honestly have to say that for a well, four and a half year old device, um, the results are quite good. Drive is a lot faster, but honestly, I can't really notice the speed differences during normal usage. So if I just do that and that and just open them up again. They're both there nearly instantly. Let's just see what happens. I've pressed them around the same time. I've still got the startup chime here. And so let's just see how fast those two machines are. They're running the same image and the 2012 MacBook seems to be a bit faster than the 2016 MacBook. I didn't really expect that to happen because, well, the SSD on the new one is a lot quicker. So somehow the 2012 MacBook Pro is, well, a tad quicker in the startup test. I can't really explain why this is the case. So for the next benchmark uh, or test, I've decided to um, do some bit of a gaming test. I've started um, the Valley benchmark on both devices. Um, they're running on the same settings. And if we have a look at the frames counter up here on the old machine while well, I'm getting around 11 frames per second. Uh, comparing that to um, the same scene on the 2016 MacBook Pro, I'm get, getting around yeah 35 frames, so around three times the frames. And as you can see, well, that is running quite smoothly. Okay, so the results are in. Um, what you can hear is the fan noise of the 2012 MacBook Pro. Uh, it's definitely a lot louder than the new one. So um, just have a look at the results here. We've got a f normal frames per second of 11.9 and a score of 498 points. So nearly 500 points here and moving over to the um, 2016 MacBook Pro we see that we've got nearly three times that score we end up at 1435 points also um, the minimum frames of the whole benchmark is higher than the maximum frames that the 2012 MacBook Pro achieved so in gaming performance, the four and a half year difference in integrated chips is definitely noticeable. Coming to the last benchmark or rather um, comparison that I want to do, the battery on the new MacBook Pro has been quite of a controversial topic during the last few weeks. As you can see here, Apple's even removed the time that you would have normally seen here. I've installed coconut battery on the new one just to check how long the battery uh, lasts. And comparing it to the old one, well, it's four and a half years old. Uh, as you can see here, I've got 381 cycles compared to the five of the new one. Um, but actually, it's not that bad. Um, Unfortunately, I'm normally using Google Chrome as a daily web browser, so um, that's really bad on battery life. I get around, well, four, four and a half if I don't use Chrome. It goes up to more than five hours um, of battery life on the old machine. That's four and a half years old. And 
always says I should check the battery. And on the new one, um, well, it's just running Spotify now. And it's showing me that Spotify is needing a lot of energy. And you can't really um, give much on that battery time indicator. That's also the reason why they removed it. There's some kind of a problem with the new CPU generation that it's um, updating the clock speed really, really quickly and quite often. And uh, so that's going up and down every one or two minutes. So just when we finished the benchmark, it was at 40 minutes left of battery life and now it's three hours up. So it's not that um, good and that's good that they removed it therefore. So in a normal usage, I ended up getting around five and a half to six hours. I'm um, just doing normal browsing. Um, a bit of graphics heavy work, but normal usage five and a half hours. So the new MacBook Pro just around averages one hour more of battery life compared to a four and a half year old machine. Um, which I think is quite abysmal because, well, that one had the old one has nearly 400 cycles on it, has lost 500 milliampere hours of its capacity, and it's still quite similar to uh, in regard to um, battery times. I will, of course, um, test the battery life on the new one a bit further because, well, it's new, and I think a few cycles might help. So coming to a conclusion, um, in this comparison between the MacBook Pro 2012 without any Retina display and the 2016 MacBook Pro with Touch Bar, let's just start with five points why if you own that MacBook Pro you should probably keep it. Um, for one, it's upgradable, well you, you don't have any issue, just remove the back plate. Uh, put in another um, hard drive, put in an SSD, upgrade the RAM to 8 gigs, and you can even use one of those um, nifty drives if you want, don't want to do that and just plug it into the SD port and um, this gives you in this case 64 gigs of hard disk and it's not that slow either. Well it has a lot more ports, you won't need an adapter to use them which I think is quite something if you're on the move and you don't want to carry a lot more stuff with you. And I'm, I personally just recently forgot the adapter when I need, really needed it. So it's annoying. You will have to get used to, uh, will have to get used to it on the new one. But okay. If you're a heavy DVD and CD user, um, there's really not that m many of those people anymore. But if you're, you should probably really stick with the old machine because, well, it's um, still got one. And you also have the cancelling lock um, here. So if you need that, um, you're mostly stuck with this machine because the newer MacBooks don't have that anymore. Why should you choose the 2016 MacBook Pro if you're in the market for a new device? Um, well, it has better graphics performance if you're using uh, hard disk a lot, like when, like when using Final Cut Pro or iMovie, you will get better results with the blazing fast SSD in the new model. Um, it's a lot lighter, um, it's a lot thinner if you really need that. And well, the ports are a lot quicker, so you can get up to 40 gigs per second through the Thunderbolt 3 ports. And it's 5K capable. I don't even know if the uh, 2012 MacBook Pro can do 4K over Thunderbolt um, 1 or 2, but it definitely can't fi do 5K. So, I hope you liked the video. Um, if you did so, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, let me know what, um, what you didn't like in the comments. And I'll be back with another week video shortly on how I decided whether I will keep the new MacBook Pro or I'll stay with the older one. Thanks for watching.